Hi, and welcome to a new video. Due to current events, I have to postpone the announced video about VST instruments. ImageLine has released a new beta for the upcoming 20.9. I didn't do a video on beta number 4, as on its own there were too little changes, so we do a summary of beta 4 and 5 together. Let's start with beta 4. Recording location. Improved recording insert options. In the mixer we find now a few new options under this button. There is external inputs only. This mode means that the audio is recorded directly from your sound card and can't be changed inside of FL Studio before it's being printed. This is the recommended option. External and mixer input mix includes external input and audio from internally routed mixer tracks. Recordings are made from the point just prior to the mixer track effects at the top of the FX stack. So what does this mean? I might be wrong, but this mode enables us for the first time in FL Studio to real-time record the output of other mixer channels into a new track without using Addison. I have an audio clip inserted on audio track 1, which is connected to mixer track 1. I route mixer track 1 to track 2 only which I record ARM with this second option. I activate recording in the transport, which tells me I would have to choose an external input first. I take my microphone input and can record the output of audio track 1 together with my voice. One, two, three, four. Very cool. We got PostFX, which records everything up to the EQ. You can see the gating in the recorded audio. Next is PostEQ. Everything the same, but including the mixer EQ. Post level and panning. Again, everything, but including mixer fader and panning. And post track, which would be recorded as if you would send the whole track to a different one, including the mute controls and perhaps the stereo tools. Very nice stuff, where I just would wish that they would not always insist on having any external input selected for the first time recording. Perhaps sometimes I just want to record the output of a different channel into the playlist. No need for external inputs here. Anyway, for following recordings, it accepts the record without any external input, as a little workaround. Mixer Track right-click and mixer menu options to reset routing for selected tracks to default. If we take insert 1 from our last example which is disconnected from the master and just routed to insert 2. By right-clicking the track there is a new option about halfway and it sets the routing back to its default. Nice. Works of course for multiple tracks as well. This is a huge one. Automation clips. Added context aware type in value support for automation clip editing. For every context aware parameter inside of FL Studio and native plugins, you can set automation points to direct values without copy and paste anymore. Automation clip for mixer volume, minus 20 dB. Placing the play cursor and looking into the mixer, Minus 20 dB. PQ2 frequency 500 Hz. Looking at the plugin, 500 Hz. Very cool. This is a huge step ahead for my workflow. Thanks very much. Only downside this seemed to work just in the new editor window and not in the automation clip itself. Not a showstopper, just that you know. Mixer. Increase brightness of volume dB label on mixer tracks. Playlist. Renamed consolidate tracks, full song, 
to From Song Start to Match Export Options. FL Studio. Undo of instrument channel and effect preset loading is now possible. I don't know exactly what this shall mean, but just to make a guess. If you insert a plugin via the menu or plugin picker, change any preset inside, it doesn't undo the preset change, but the loading of the plugin. Patcher. The map tab is now a static workspace with scroll bars. I'm sorry, but I don't like it. Instead of taking care that Patcher stays more organized and avoid chaos, they now started to implement some new visual features. Here it is now scrolling windows as the first step. Means as soon as you have modules in Patcher which are outside the visible part, you get now some scroll bars to navigate around. Different people, different taste, but that's not what I would have wished. Second, there is a nice addition for adding plugins without wanting them being auto-connected. Hold Alt key when dropping a plugin preset to add it without any connections. Normally, a new added plugin, especially generator, would be auto-connected when dragging in. Plugins added from the menu are now placed at the mouse click location. This is another good addition to Patcher. Until now, whenever you inserted a new plugin via the right-click menu, it was placed more or less in the middle of the GUI and you had to drag it manually to its place. Now the new plugins are added where you right-clicked. Very nice. For the last two points, there is nothing to show for me. Moving on to Beta 5. Many ask for it and here it is. I cannot follow this hype, I never used any sound songs in the last 20 years, but it seems there are a few lovers of this format. And they've got now the 64-bit edition of the Fruity Sound Phone Player. Envelope Editor. Adding, removing and editing target links is undoable and removing them shows a warning. We got already some automation clips here. Removing target links gives me a warning like they say. And Ctrl Z brings back the removed link. And now it comes, my personal highlight of this beta. Multiple selection of points in all envelope editors. This is super cool. No matter if in automation clips or other sections where you find this type of envelopes, you can now select multiple breakpoints and edit them together. Moving. Changing the point's shape or tension. Deleting. This makes things so much easier. Thanks very, very much for bringing this to us. New time. New shift markers. Groove and shift controls. Now color coordinated with corresponding markers. Audio inputs. Edit an option from the playlist header right-click menu to select an audio input. For every audio track in the playlist, we got now a new submenu to choose the input directly on the playlist track. On top of that, there is an improved undo of audio recordings. A user mentioned the other day that silently there was fixed a positioning bug for recorded audio clips as well. I don't know about this bug, but I was told that FL Studio now places recorded audio clips sample accurate in the right spot, what didn't seem to be the case before. I think people who were affected by this misbehavior know what I'm saying here. Mixer. Undo group mixer tracks. Input select. Monitoring and latency. So there are more changes we can undo easily if we want. But the next one is very cool indeed. With the previous betas, we already had the option to turn multiple playlist tracks into audio tracks, routed to consecutive mixer tracks. Already very cool, but now we go one step ahead. Multiple assigned to new audio track in the mixer for all selected tracks. Now we can go the other way around. Select any mixer tracks and turn them into audio tracks, which means we can select non-consecutive tracks. Yes! Some more undo optimizations. 
FL Studio plugins, undo for envelope changes and some other non-automatable actions. And channels, undo when replacing audio files in channels. Control surface patcher controls, new user sizable grid for control snapping. In the right click menu of the surface, we have now some more options for those who need them. Frequency shifter, new visualizations, input output spectrum and oscilloscope. Click visualization to change. Patcher. Hold Alt when dropping a plugin preset to create an unconnected module. This was already in the changelog of Beta 4. And excuse me that I'm not very excited about the following stuff, but I'll shortly go over some for those who might perhaps like it. Use Lasso Zoom to focus an area. Honestly, I have no idea how this shall work. I tried, but no idea at all. Edit Minimap to help with navigation. This will be my default setting for the future. Added zoom options to the map root menu. Mouse wheel zoom. To me, this is a Freudian slip. Shit middle mouse button to pan the map. Everybody who perhaps followed this beta thread on the forum will have read about my two cents on this topic and I will not comment it any further here. But moving on, Rapper allows saving VSD preset files for VSD3 plugins. In previous versions, it was just possible to load a VST preset file, but not saving of any. For everybody who is into scripting, there are a bunch of changes. But here comes another highlight I know many of you were waiting for, and they didn't even mention it in their announcement. We got now some kind of auto-monitoring setting for your mixer tracks. In previous versions, as soon as you had an input enabled, FL Studio was always outputting everything from this input, no matter if you had armed this track or not. These times are gone. Since this new beta, there are new monitoring options. Off, which is always to mute it. Makes no sense in first place, but anyway. When armed, which is the setting everybody was waiting for. Arm a track and it will output the signal from the selected input. Disarm it and the input is muted. Welcome to a new world. And finally there is on, which basically restores the old behavior, for example for being able to record in Edison. Just a few days ago I talked to somebody who told me this was the only thing which held him off to make the switch from Ableton to FL Studio. Now, my friend, there is no excuse anymore. But enough for today. Enjoy the new features. Many of them are a great help and will make life easier in future. Stay tuned and thank you for watching. <laughs>